a security insider blows the whistle on Twitter, claiming that it's lying to people, violating regulations, and undermining our security. Elon Musk must be so happy. America Uncovered, I'm Chris Chappell. Twitter is having it rough these days. They have to deal with a legal war against Elon Musk, declining ad revenue, and a shrinking workforce. Not to mention the fact that Twitter isn't even cool enough for politicians anymore. No, all the politicians are on TikTok now. If Twitter doesn't even have people fighting over politics anymore, what is it even for? Well, according to a new Twitter whistleblower, it's for reckless and negligent cybersecurity that endangers us all. And the whistleblower is no small fry. He's Peter Zatko, also known as Mudge. I'm Mudge. You're Zatko Mudge. is better known in the hacking world by his nickname, Mudge. He's been a renowned cybersecurity expert for decades. His roots are in hacking, figuring out how computers and software work. I miss the 90s. Zatko has worked for big names like Google and the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency. Then he joined Twitter in 2020, but Twitter fired him in January. Zatko claims he was fired in retaliation for trying to sound the alarm about Twitter's security issues. Twitter claims Zatko was fired for ineffective leadership and poor performance. Hey, both could be true. Twitter probably thinks that effective leadership is covering up possible security issues, like Hunter Biden's laptop. Last month, Zatko filed an 84-page whistleblower complaint, raising security concerns with the Securities and Exchange Commission, the Department of Justice, and the Federal Trade Commission. Both CNN and The Washington Post got a redacted version of the complaint that was given to Congress and published the PDF online. Even redacted, it paints a very negative picture of Twitter's egregious deficiencies. Zatko makes a number of claims in the 200-page disclosure, but a few major themes stand out. Here are his top three claims. Number one, Twitter has misled people about spam bots. Twitter is currently in a feud with Elon Musk over him buying Twitter, or not buying Twitter since Musk now wants to back out of the deal he signed. One issue that Musk brought up is Twitter's spam bots. Twitter claims that spam and fake accounts comprise less than 5% of total users. But Musk doesn't believe that. He said the deal to buy Twitter cannot move forward until it proves its bot numbers. It's questionable whether that's the actual reason he's backing out from purchasing Twitter. But Musk said he was worried about Twitter lacking incentive to fix spam bots. And then along came Mudge. According to Mudge, I mean Zatko, Musk is correct. Twitter executives have little or no personal incentive to accurately detect or measure the prevalence of spam bots. Zatko takes aim at Twitter's use of monetizable daily active usage or users, MDAU for short, as opposed to all active users like other social media. Monetizable daily active users are Twitter's way of measuring Twitter users who logged in or were otherwise authenticated and accessed Twitter. Twitter gives this information to advertisers, but Twitter's very vague on the formula it uses to come up with the numbers. Twitter even admitted it had been overcounting users back in April. Then the SEC asked Twitter to clarify how Twitter calculates MDAU back in June. And Twitter responded, but it's not clear whether the explanation was good enough for the SEC. Zatko says Twitter is cherry-picking MDAU data to hide the true number of bots. By reporting bots only as a percentage of MDAU, rather than as a percentage of the total number of accounts on the platform, Twitter obscures the true scale of fake and spam accounts on the service, a move Zatko alleges is deliberately misleading. That's where Twitter gets the only 5% of users are spam bots number from. So how many spam bots are there really? Apparently no one knows. According to Zatko, deliberate ignorance was the norm amongst the executive leadership team. 
The senior management at Twitter allegedly don't want to properly measure the number of bots because more accurate information could hurt Twitter's image and affect ad revenue. Well, more than it's already being affected. Musk definitely liked hearing about this. And in case you were wondering, Zatko's lawyers claim that he has not been in contact with Musk and that he started the whistleblower process before Musk's buyout of Twitter was even in the works. But misleading people about bots is only the tip of the Twitter iceberg. I'll tell you more after the break. Welcome back. Peter Zatko is blowing the whistle on Twitter's bad practices, and he has plenty to say. His first major concern was that the company has been misleading about its bot numbers. But that's just claim number one. Moving on. Number two, poor privacy and security. Back in 2011, the Federal Trade Commission investigated Twitter for failing to safeguard personal information. Twitter was supposed to put in place stronger data security protections, but Zatko's complaint charges that Twitter's problems grew worse over time instead, which seems likely since Twitter experienced a major hack in 2020. That's why Zatko was brought on in the first place. According to Zatko, even after the FTC's 2011 investigation, Twitter continued to mine user data such as phone numbers and email addresses intended only for security purposes for ad targeting and marketing campaigns. Twitter was fined for doing this earlier this year. You never learn. But mining user data isn't the only issue. The complaint also had plenty to say about Twitter users who canceled their accounts. Canceled accounts are supposed to be deleted, but it's not clear that Twitter is doing that. When the FTC asked about canceled accounts, Twitter replied that the accounts were deactivated, but Zatko alleges that the data couldn't even be accounted for. In other words, Twitter didn't know if the data was deleted or not. It was Schrodinger's data. There's also allegedly a lot of security flaws in Twitter. Zacco claims laptops and data centers that access servers are not being kept up to date and that a widespread crash could lead to permanent irreparable failure, which is honestly probably the best outcome. I mean, would the world really be a worse place without Twitter? At this point, I'd almost rather watch a live feed of a dumpster fire. Zacco also claims execs encouraged lying to the board of directors about Twitter's problems. But what's really concerning is that there are far too many people at Twitter with backdoor access. The complaint says over half of Twitter's 8,000 person staff was authorized to access the live production environment and sensitive user data. Twitter lacked the ability to know who accessed systems or data or what they did with it in much of their environment. So that tweet you posted about your ex? Yeah, everyone at Twitter is talking about it. With so many employees having that much access, privacy is a long forgotten dream. But that's not all. Giving critical access to so many employees raises the odds that administrative powers could be abused or stolen, which leads to number three. Twitter is vulnerable to foreign actors. Zacco claims that he found many threats to our national security and democracy. He specifically cites how the Indian government forced Twitter to hire specific people who were government agents. Thanks to Twitter's lax security controls, those agents would have significant access to sensitive data. Which isn't far-fetched. After all, Saudi Arabia was caught doing that. Yes, Twitter has hired spies from authoritarian governments. Oops. Zacco also claims that Twitter executives opted to allow Twitter to become more dependent upon revenue coming from Chinese entities, even though the Twitter service is blocked in China. I guess the Great Firewall can block Twitter, but the money keeps flowing. But it wasn't just about the money. Some people at Twitter were concerned that the kind of information these Chinese entities could then access would let them identify Twitter users in China. Twitter executives knew that accepting Chinese money risked endangering users in China. Twitter executives understood this constituted a major ethical compromise. Mr. Zatko was told that Twitter was too dependent on the revenue stream at this point to do anything other than increase it. 
Okay, so Twitter executives were basically like, we know we're doing a bad thing that could hurt people, but we need the money, so do it more. Zacco also claims that then-CTO Parag Agrawal suggested that Twitter should consider ceding to the Russian Federation's censorship and surveillance demands as a way to grow users in Russia. Probably a good thing that Agrawal didn't go through with that, if Zacco's claims are true. Saved him the trouble of being associated with Russia's war on Ukraine. Now, many of Zatko's claims have not been corroborated, and the complaint itself did not provide evidence for his charges. It does mention supporting documents that were sent to the U.S. government. Those have not yet been disclosed. But even without those documents, Zatko's claims are already bringing up a lot of scrutiny. More after the break. Welcome back. Twitter's been getting a lot of backlash thanks to Zatko's whistleblowing and its stock price is feeling it. So like I said earlier, Twitter is trying to paint Zatko as a disgruntled former employee. Twitter also said that Zatko is opportunistically seeking to inflict harm on Twitter, its customers, and its shareholders. But I mean, come on. Companies always say things like that about whistleblowers. An internal memo to Twitter staff describes Zatko's allegations as a false narrative that is riddled with inconsistencies and inaccuracies and presented without important context. What are the facts and context? I don't know. But Zatko had a pretty good reputation. That's why Twitter hired him in the first place. Many U.S. officials are demanding answers, such as the chair of the U.S. House of Representatives Homeland Security Committee. Other lawmakers have sent letters to the FTC and Justice Department demanding action. Zacco has already discussed his complaint with several congressional committees, and a Senate panel is set for September 13th. According to former FTC Chair John Leibowitz, the stakes of Zacco's disclosures are enormous. It could lead to billions of dollars in new fines for Twitter if it's found to have violated its legal obligations. This could also hurt Twitter internationally, as the national data protection authorities in Ireland and France are already following up on the whistleblower complaint. All of this really sucks for Twitter, but I'm sure Musk is having a field day watching this unfold. So what do you think? Leave your comments below. And if you like this show, remember that we rely mainly on direct support from viewers like you. You can either support us on patreon.com slash America Uncovered, or on our exclusive social media community on Locals at americauncovered.locals.com. Become a supporter and help us keep making great episodes. Click the link below. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. Thanks for watching America Uncovered.